Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into your reading. I hope you guys are doing well. So today's reading is How Do They Feel About You? So I've got a couple of stacks here with tarot cards and oracle cards. So whoever's on your mind, how do they feel about you? Um, first off, I just wanted to let all my astrologers out there know that if you would like a recommendation to Keen, go ahead and message me at lovetheoracledragon at gmail.com because they are hiring but only through um, referrals, okay? So with that being said, um, I think it is worth checking out. I know a lot of um, advisors and readers of different kinds try to get on to Keen and they're rarely hiring, so this would be a good opportunity if that is something you're interested in. So we're gonna get started with group one. If you haven't chosen your group yet, um, you know, the timestamps are down below. Pause the video if you need more time. And you can watch, you know, one of the groups or both of them. Remember, this is a general reading. So just take what resonates and what relates and forget what doesn't. And um, energies can be interchangeable or vice versa. So keep that in mind. But, you know, obviously if it resonates, just take it that way. So I'm going to get started with um, my Art Deco tarot cards. And... Group one, how does your person of interest feel about you? These are your cards, so I'm gonna show them to you and let's get started. Um, actually, let me flip this over first. I want to put them down in the order that they came out of the deck. So, how does your person feel about you? We've got the Six of Cups. We've got the Strength card. And we've got the Ten of Cups. So basically how this person feels about you is that this is a romantic relationship where, um, where you handle them well, um, where you handle them well in marriage or that you would handle them well in marriage. So this person feels very seriously about you. They can see that potential. Some of you are married to this person, but, <clears throat> and this could be somebody from your past in this life or another life, another life like a soulmate. But that's that's the gist. Okay, the 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 quick and dirty. The the summary is that this is a romantic. This person feels like this is a romantic relationship where you handle them well in marriage or that you would. Okay, um, children could be a factor in here. But um, bottom line is that okay, and so. Yeah, we've got Leo energy and water sign energy so far, but regardless of sign, that's the first message. So I'm gonna move these out of the way and pull, put down some more cards on how this person feels about you. <clears throat> Excuse me, so group one, how does group one's person feel about them? Next we have the moon card. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the page of wands. And the Hierophant. So this person feels like they're in trouble. Okay, they, they feel like they're in trouble, the relationship's in trouble, or um, somebody's in trouble here. Okay? A, a kid or child could be in trouble. There's some sort of trouble here. This person feels like they're in trouble or in a bad place and it's normal for them. Okay. Yeah. So I think this person has told you this or wants to tell you this. They want to communicate with you about a peaceful resolution. So yes, this can pertain to something outside of the relationship, but within the relationship, it's like there is, um, you know, some sort of trouble, some sort of trouble. And it could have happened, you know, at night, um, we've got a crescent moon, we've got a full moon, but um, this person does want to communicate about um, a peaceful resolution. Could be too, they want to prevent any trouble as well. So, um, so that everything can, can be back to good or it feels like everything is normal. Like some of you are having a, a good relationship um, with this person or there is a good relationship or a serious relationship here already but it doesn't have to be so the gist with that is that this person feels like um, 
whatever kind of hot water they've gotten themselves into, whatever this trouble is, it's like it's been normalized. Like it's it's normal. And also this person um, feels like making things okay and just telling you about it. But um, mostly that they feel like um, whatever the situation is, it's kind of become normalized, right? This has just been the way it is or it's the way it is. That's how they feel. So let's get some more cards on this. Okay, how else does this person feel about group one? Got the Knight of Wands. And we got the Death card. And we've got the Four of Pentacles. So, this is a pretty straightforward message, um, and I channel as a female, so just apply your correct pronouns, but I'm going to say it this way, he's going to quit holding back, okay? There is an end to holding back. So he could be holding back due to trying to keep the peace with his family, or some other family-like situation, or it could be just being non-communicative, maybe trying to fit in and hold back his feelings because he's trying to fit into something, but that that's coming to an end, okay? So this is something that um, he's going to do. For some of you, the trouble has been that this person has left the relationship or has not been committed to it but what what they feel is that that's coming to an end and that you know if there's something they need to tell you they're going to say it to you they feel like telling you they feel like um, sharing some something with you maybe something they haven't told you before I mean generally speaking when we say that somebody's holding something back that means that they're holding back something they want to say or share or else you know they wouldn't be holding back <laughs> you know so they're holding back something and this is um, something they want to come forward with and basically bottom line put an end to this holding back okay they want this to this to end so they want that holding back to end okay so if the situation is a problematic situation, they want that to end. If it's problematic for X, Y, and Z reason, like somebody is on again, off again, or something like that, regardless, fill in the blank, your situation, whatever that trouble is, they want that to end. But essentially, they want to end holding back. So I've got the rest of your cards here. Let me look at some of these and go through them real quick. Because I might have looked at them before, but I don't remember. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So we see here that this person is wanting to be flexible. There's flexibility needed here. Um, I feel like this person, in order to be their true selves, they need to be able to be flexible. Maybe they are a free spirit, freedom loving, but they want the stability that comes from knowing that you're, you're there. They want the stability and they want to be... I mean, it could be the other way around. They want to be stable for you to be flexible. They want to be stable for you to be your true self here. Um, yeah, some of you, this has been kind of like an on again, off again thing. But even if it hasn't, a message from this person is, I want to be your favorite hello and your hardest goodbye. Some other messages from this person is, um... Yes, I'm slow to make a move, but once I do, I'm the most loyal and solid partner. Trust me, I'm worth it. Yeah. So that's Knight of Pentacles energy, and we already had Pentacles, which is Earth sign energy. Then we've got Scorpio energy, Fire energy. We've got Pisces and Cancer. We've got um, we've got Taurus. Okay. So let's see what else. Yeah, for some of you, this means rekindling. An old flame returns, okay? So some someone from the past coming back, going to put an end to withholding, okay? Um, like the cards, 
at the card said previously this could be something that has been ongoing for a while like this person said maybe they're slow but um, they do want to rekindle things here and we've got healing family issues your love life benefits when you forgive your parents so um, that card's more about just more than just about forgiving your parents. It's coming out on top of the Ten of Cups, which is a family card. So maybe there is a rift within their family, your family. Um, maybe this person has issues because of you know difficult parental relationships. We often can relate to that. Many of us do have those kind of issues. Um, we've got this kind of this angel, Cupid, or spirit above here trying to guide the situation. I feel like. Maybe somebody is being guided to be more flexible. If this person has been rigid or stern and withholding, then they're being guided to be uh, more open, less rigid, okay? To heal the family issues, to forgive what needs to be for forgiven because this person feels like they love you. They have love for you. They can see it going in that direction. There is love here. This person, especially that Ten of Cups, And, you know, even if there has been a painful ending here, your person saying, I'm determined to give generously to you, even putting your needs above mine, no matter, no matter how hard it is. So I guess that goes along with opening up or sharing. Maybe this is what this person would like to say to basically the sentiment is to rekindle, to forgive, to heal, um, and to express themselves and to let you know that they are willing to work on this. Then we've got more, I think this is Four of Pentacles energy, or Four of Cups. I usually know, but oh well. We've got more Four energy here, saying that if I turn into a clam by shutting down when you're around, it's because I don't want to open up to you. So this is probably a major, a major thorn in the relationship. This has probably been an issue, this person shutting down, someone clamming up, shutting down, not wanting to express, not wanting to express themselves, not wanting to open up to you. It feels like it has to do with like societal or familial expectations or just the way they were raised. Um, this person feels like you're just kind of in, kind of a genius here, ingenuity. Like that goes along with that strength card. That's Gretel, um, number five. Somebody could have five in their numbers in numerology, but this person feels like you are kind of like yeah, you just know how to handle the situation. You have a protective energy. You know how to prevent problems. Maybe you haven't prevented problems so far because maybe they haven't allowed you to do that because they shut down or um, something else, but they're no longer going to shut down. Um, and what Gretel does is she saves her brother by shutting the witch into the oven, right? So it's like um, you might look very sweet. You might be very sweet but they know that you can handle yourself and when the chips are down that you can rise to a conflict like you're very you're very smart and you can think on your feet okay and you can show up and deliver and succeed in uh, tough situations um and we've got this card the player so maybe this person has been a player before or maybe that's what you're dealing with now that would be a conflict in any relationship in any romantic love relationship right but this person, yeah, it's coming across with that card too. We've got, I love you so much, can't you see that? Well, if somebody's behaving like a player, I think that it would be hard for the other person to see that, but that card is coming out and is saying that this person does love you. Um, yeah, something is holding me back. Engagement ring, engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion, union, so... Apparently, something has been holding this person back from coming into union. Maybe this person already sensed that this connection has that potential to go all the way and they just weren't ready. Um, they were scared. They had to heal. But this definitely has commitment potential or you are committed. A lot of different people watch. So there are different scenarios, but this person feels like you could be their, their person, their eternity. Um, let's see what else has come out here. I enjoy medium danger, okay? So this person is um, not wanting to take any grand risks or anything like that. That goes along with that Hierophant energy, right? The hier Hierophant 
sticks with the tried and true, you know, because that is something reliable that they can trust. Um, the Hierophant is risk averse, right? It just does, he just does what is expected of him, what makes him feel okay, approved of. So this person is just, um, they, they enjoy medium danger. They, they do want a little risk, a little spice. Uh, maybe that's why they have been in a player energy if they have. Um, if you're a player, maybe that's why this person's indulged you as they have because they like a little bit of danger, but only medium, right? Don't get too carried away here. Um, that's that's the message with that. And it says being, seeking, being. So this person is, is seeking you. My vital organ is eternally wounded. So this is a card of heartbreak. And we saw Ten of Swords earlier, so... This person is feeling heartbroken over you or there's been heartbreak in this um, somebody enjoying medium danger perhaps was the the catalyst or the reason for the heartbreak we've got surrender to the divine full moon so this person feels like surrendering just, just to be calm and centered is a way in which we surrender and to get what we want we need to surrender anyway so that's what this is saying here and I did mention the moon before, so strong Pisces and Cancerian energy coming through, or something could happen uh, of significance in this relationship during a full moon or a crescent moon. But um, essentially this is about surrendering. So again, the four of pentacles needs to surrender. And that's what this person feels like doing, surrendering to you, opening up. Then we've got um, Archangel Gabriel's dragon brings purification, self-discipline will speed ascension and bring joy. You can carry Archangel Gabriel's diamond. So there's a diamond and we saw before with the engagement ring. So if this isn't your fiance, this person feels like making that happen. They feel like they, I mean, I really feel like this person feels like making that happen with you. Something here has to do with an engagement. We've got Joan Collins. Um, let's see what this says. Some of you, there, there could be a significant age difference between the two of you. I know that she used to like to date much younger men, so that could be you or um, this person could be older, doesn't matter. Bottom line, age difference. And then, um, so age is just a number, irrelevant unless it's a vintage wine. This person could be a wine drinker, like the finer things in life here. Um, and everything is a potential character. Everyone is a potential character for a novel. So I don't know if somebody likes to read a, a voracious, like a voracious reader or somebody is, um, they just see life like a movie or life like, um, like a novel or a game or something like that. Also, somebody could be a Gemini. I believe she's a Gemini or have that in their chart, but everyone is a potential character in a novel. Um, everybody has a role to play, right? Um, so that's that here. And beauty is power, so use it rather than lose it. So maybe this person's very attractive. Okay, and they had a lot of option or have a lot of options because of that. Um, I know that traditionally speaking, you know, women are advised to trade on their looks, right? Um, it sounds cold and transactional, but, and that's just reality of how life has been historically. So maybe um, they feel like you're this kind of person or this is the kind of person they have been. Um, somebody that you know uses their beauty because beauty is power for women. I remember having a boss tell me that. Like I, I'm always, I've always been a very independent person. Um, I saw a lot of codependency growing up, and I decided early on that I wasn't going to rely on, you know, on a man to pay my bills and all of that because it's not worth it in the end. They're not reliable, right? And sorry, my man, I, you know statistically speaking and if this doesn't apply then obviously you shouldn't be triggered because we're not talking about you then right but uh, that's what I saw growing up so my boss told me then you know well you know beauty is power that's always been you know how women trade that that's what that's where your power is and stuff like that and I'm just like eh. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah but I don't know that doesn't stick right with me so um, maybe somebody out there feels the same way as I do but um, this person is kind of just saying that they they feel like you're beautiful and that you could trade on your looks if you wanted to if you don't if you don't already and also you know the more attractive somebody is the more options they have so um, a way to use your beauty is to 
you know, use it to explore your options. Um, we've got bird flying. News is on the way. We saw the page of the page of wands. So this person is going to be um, contacting you, messaging you. There's some sort of news about this on on its way here. Also, I feel like you know this is indicating somebody flew away from the connection, or um, somebody could be taking a trip, flying somewhere as well. A bird. A bird can have significance here. We've got boot, increase your efforts if you want to achieve your goals. And we saw that before about purification and self-discipline. So, um, you know, this person feels like, you know, self-discipline is necessary, has been needed in order to just sort of clean up their act, I guess you could say, and or to find their happiness because, you know, trouble has been their normal, basically. And um, maybe this connection is just at a place where it's just not moving forward. It's all about the troubles and the relationships. It's not doing well. Um, that That's a possibility here too. But this person is feeling like, you know, it can be turned around. And um, it's just going to take some effort. And then we've got Nest. An emotionally secure, loving family is important to you. So this person is saying that now. If it wasn't the case before, if you didn't know that, they're saying that they feel that an emotionally secure and loving family is important. And um, they could feel that way about you too. Maybe this is something you have in common. One or both of you feels that way, that it's important. And we saw that with that, with that Cups card, that Ten of Cups, right? So um, Ten of Cups, you know, represents and shows like an emotionally secure and, and loving family and um, the importance of that. So this person feels like that's something they can have with you. They feel like that's something you want. Um, essentially, they're saying they're going to um, communicate with you and let their guard down with you and that they're putting an end to the, the holding back and stuff like that. So this is what I've got for you, group one, taking it to group two. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe if you liked the reading. Um, if you'd like a private reading, my contact information is down below. I don't know if I let you guys know before, but I started doing um, $5 email readings. So check that out for details if you'd like one of those. And I'm going to take it to group two. Hi, group two. Welcome to your reading. Sorry I don't have the little group two number up in the corner. I don't know where it went. It got lost in your pile of cards maybe. So um, I'm going to get started with the tarot cards from my Art Deco tarot deck and <laughs> we're going to get started with that, okay? So how does your person feel about you? The one on your mind, the one you came to the reading for? We've got the Eight of Swords. She's been like liking to come out a lot lately, I noticed, for you guys. So the Magician and the Hermit. Virgo, Gemini, and strong air energy, but regardless of sign, what we're getting here in terms of how this person feels about you, group two, this person feels like this just can't be done, and they're looking into healing, okay? It's basically what this person feels like. So this is probably going to be your separation group. Um, group one had a little bit of that in it, but it was also it could also have gone for people in committed relationships or marriages too so if that's more your more your jam if that's if that resonates more relates to you more then check out group one as well if you want to but this seems like a separation group um not uncommon but anyway yeah this person feels like this just can't be done they're looking into healing so i feel like it's more that it's not that this person is saying this relationship can't be done like you guys can't do this relationship i feel like this is it's been it's had an ending of some kind and they want a new beginning with the magician they are looking into healing they could be seeing you heal but they just feel like this can't be done this just can't be okay see what else this person says so um yeah how does this person feel about it we go, we've got judgment we've got nine of swords and we've got the full. So essentially, this person feels that they want another chance. 
um, but that stresses them out because you're not there. So if you are in separation, then obviously you guys, you know, aren't together. Therefore, someone is not here. You're not there. If you're not there, they don't know how they're going to make this, um, how they're going to make this, this second chance happen. And so it does stress this person out. Like it stresses them out a lot, especially if they see you healing. If they see that you have started off on a new path away from them and, and that you seem happy doing your thing, then you know, that stresses them out in the sense that they don't know then how they can have this, this second chance with you. So how they can break out of this holding pattern and um, come to terms with you about a second chance. Okay, how does this person feel about um, group two? And if I said group one, sometimes I say the wrong group. Just ignore that. This is group two, okay? Um, King of Wands. And we've got two of Wands. And we've got three of Wands. So that was interesting how those kind of came out. Okay, lots of fiery energy here. We also had more air sign and Scorpio. Aquarius but regardless of sign what we're seeing here is this is he's got such a great smile that's Louis Armstrong very handsome man but like a lot of fire signs that's how they are when they're um, when they're um, you know enjoying themselves basically when they're doing a hobby or um, when they're doing something they love like he loved he loved being a musician right, right? when they're with their friends and even when things are good in the relationship they got the huge smile they glow but also like the flip side of that is um the polar opposite right which is this person how do they feel angry irritated frustrated and sexy okay i feel like this person probably is quite sexy with all this uh fire energy or they feel they feel sexy you know, regarding you. Also, I'm getting an angry, irritated sort of energy as well. Um, it probably has to do with that Nine of Swords, that worry in the ending. But, but what is this man doing? This man is planning for. This person, your person, you know, your man, they are planning for sure that in the future things will be good. Okay? They are planning for a for a secure future. They feel like things are going to be good. So they might they might be really worried now, you might be re really worried now. But this person feels like um they can get it together and make the right decisions and invest in the right way in this um to really to move this forward and, and to get the good that can come from this, okay? So I'm gonna leave those cards there and we're gonna get into these here and I'm just gonna kind of, kind of pull them as I feel guided to. And the first one that's popping out is number 19, the little match girl choice, okay? So what happened to the little match girl? She got left out in the cold and it was very horrible for her, right? Um, to say that she was undervalued is an understatement. Um, it goes along with that Eight of Swords energy because she really was stuck in her circumstances, okay? Um, she had to sell matches because she was impoverished. She had no choice, right? And she had to stay out in the freezing cold and, and in the snow. It's snowing here, by the way, too. Um, yeah, she had to do that. And because she had like a mean caretaker or parent or something like that and uh, she had to sell them all or else she wasn't allowed to come home right and that ended badly for her so maybe there was a bad ending in this um, relationship um, maybe somebody has you know difficult parent-child relationships uh, maybe somebody is struggling to make a living maybe it's your person and they are pretty sure though that um, they've got a plan to become financially stable they've got a plan to have a good future with you here but um, it looks like there was a choice that needed to be made. And it's like, um, it was a tough choice stuck between a rock and a hard place. And I think I even saw at the back of my Art Deco Tarot deck, 
Well, it's not there anymore. Um, two of Swords. Okay. But this person feels like... Um, yeah. Inventing something new here with you. With that Magician Energy and... Gala Dolly, okay, the wife of Salvador Dolly, the artist, he says, everything in love is invention, create, soar over the ordinary, and um, it's by being in the shadow that one emits the most light, and that's interesting because, you know, we've got the little match girl in her match here, okay, and it should go without saying my regulars know that um, I'm not going to waste my time like cherry picking cards this is how it really came out and I picked these cards a couple of days ago and set them aside and then I pulled your tarot cards today so uh, it's a nice little fun synchronicity there but it's this person saying maybe you know through the separation this person you know has seen the light they have experienced um, a lot of mental anguish and worry about this and currently are. They feel like though that this has helped them to see the light, to see things differently, to see the possibilities here. And then it says be immortal rather than available. So this person feels like they have not been available, you have not been available. However it resonates, um, I feel like definitely for some, some of you out there, this person feels like you're not available, you're not there. Maybe you're focusing on yourself, maybe you're focusing on others, uh, doing your thing, but um, I'm really drawn to the word immortal, so feeling like, um, you know, a little distance is intriguing perhaps, and also that this relationship has like real soulmate potential because we've got number 35, loyal heart, okay? So feeling like, you know, there is a sort of meant to be component to this. Um, I'm seeing the infinity symbol here. I'm seeing mirroring of energies as well. So regardless of where the relationship stands now, there is a loyalty that exists from this person, like in their heart, however they're behaving, they feel like you guys are loyal in your hearts to each other. There does seem to be some issues with regard to recognition, giving this a proper respect and recognition that it deserves, and um, maybe something to do with the material plane, um, finances, boundaries, things like that. So what else? We've got loosen your grip, but don't let go. So this person is asking you not to hold on too tight, but don't let go, because like I said at the start, they feel like there's no way this can be really done. They don't see that. Um, but then they're coming out with Seven of Swords energy. I've been a two-faced liar. I wasn't really busy. I just didn't want to talk to you. So I feel like that's a specific message. Um, bottom line with that is that they're admitting to being dishonest. They're admitting to not recognizing you in the ways you know that they should have. Yet, in the very next card out is Lovers. You truly are my soulmate. You are my perfect match. So it comes out on top of Loyal Heart. Feeling like you are their perfect match again. If they didn't feel this way in the past, it's like this time apart, this, this worry, this anxiety, just this person has suffered even however they might have acted, you know. They have suffered and I think that's opened their eyes to some things, but they do feel like you are their match. You are their soulmate. We've got desperate attempt. So maybe this person has made a desperate attempt to get your attention or to reel you back in. Um, but we see a woman on the card offering that flower and women tip typically don't give flowers. Like I don't have a problem with that. I'm just saying by and large, traditionally and historically, it's the man that gives the flowers. So that could resonate for somebody out there. Maybe they feel like um, you had to make some desperate attempts to get their attention because they weren't honoring you the way that they should have. Um, but for others of you, it's the other way around. But yeah, we've got dating here and he's handing her flowers. So I really feel like it could be 50-50, like 
who is reaching out to who here. I feel like you probably have reached out to this person or vice versa and you were like really wearing your heart on your sleeve or they were wearing their heart on their sleeve towards you and then um, that was not welcome at that time. And you know, now this person wants to welcome that, or wants to give you flowers. Just something to do with flowers, giving giving flowers. She looks like she's gonna be welcoming. This person wants to feel like you're gonna be welcoming. They don't wanna feel like they're being desperate to reach out to you. Um, they just wanna know that you're gonna receive them well, okay? Because this could be the one you've already met the romantic partner you seek. This person feels like you could be the one. You can be their eternal somebody but then they come out with the Seven of Pentacles energy. I'm willing to wait for you a little bit longer, but my patience does have limits. So, um, apparently this person is waiting for you to get back from your adventures for those that resonates with, or you're on a healing journey and this person maybe is the reason why you're on that healing journey because they mistreated you. But this person either way is saying that. And then we've got Golden Solar Dragon helps you stand in your masculine power with wisdom let your dna be re reprogrammed and light codes activated become an inspired leader so this is the challenge this person needs to um, accomplish okay and this is what they feel like they need to accomplish they need to go from that shadow energy of the king of wands where they're too much led by their ego or their frustrations um, and embody more of that masculine power which is protective and wise so this person feels like I mean maybe this person works out in the sun I know the sun is very recharging for all of us we're just complicated plants after all right but um that reminds me of Leo energy too here either way this person feels like they need to you know stand in their masculine power or they're standing in their masculine power okay and taking on maybe that more traditional role um We got a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon in Cancer. So somebody could have their moon in Cancer, but um, they feel like, you know, this is coming full circle, coming back around. Um, and so it's coming to a new, a new beginning here. We've got be careful, do not take risks. Uh, so this person isn't sure how you're gonna receive them. They want you to receive them, you know, they want you to receive them well. They want you to be open to them um, coming in. They don't wanna take any un unnecessary risks. I think they feel like the odds are in their favor though because you have such a good heart. You are way too good for me is how this person feels about you. Yet though, when somebody says that you're too good for them, you know, that could be a red flag <laughs> because, um, you know I mean they're telling you who they are they tell they're telling you that they're less than you right but we'll just take it in a positive light because why not today we're saying this person just giving you a compliment okay um, but they there is something here you know obviously with this person's character I mean you're in separation for a reason or there has been you're watching this reading for a reason um, majority who watch are watching because they're trying to solve some sort of a problem or something like that bottom line this person needs to become a better person and they know it they feel like maybe they're already a good person but they feel like they could be better maybe they just have you up on a pedestal we've got date meeting someone new dating getting back out there so this person wants to date you we already saw the date card come out maybe you guys are presently dating and so this is kind of like a deep insight into how it will be or is some of the things that you should pay attention to but um yeah, something to do with getting out there and wanting to plan. So like this person might be angry and irritable right now or frustrated, but they're definitely planning um, planning for sure that in the future things will be good. So they're planning a date with you here. We've got secrecy, an affair, hiding something, discretion, surprise, risk. Again, so maybe one of you is with someone else or there's some other reason why this relationship is a, a risk. Maybe the only risk is to your hearts, especially if things have been hard between the two of you. But um, it's also about collaborating together to make this date happen, okay? <clears throat> okay. 
and just be careful of that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we've got, it's like observing myself in the reflective glass. In other words, um, yeah, I feel like third party energy here again with this swap one existence square between any two beings. Um, but what this is saying is um, you're like looking into a mirror and we saw with the Loyal Hearts card, the two owls looking at each other, they basically look the same. And the way they're looking at each other is like looking at, you know, looking at a, looking at a mirror. So there's some mirroring going on. Maybe you guys resemble one another. You know how they say old married couples resemble each other. They start to look alike after a while. Um, even if you're not an old married couple, you know. There's something about your energies or your behaviors, your vibe here that this person feels like is a mirror image there. Um, we've got temptation as well. So this person finds you tempting. They're not sure if they want to pick that apple because it's a risk, but they find you tempting. We've got May. Somebody could have been born in May. Some sort of significance here. Maybe this is when you'll go on your next date with this person or a special date happens in May. Um... For some of you, this is a dream come true, but your person feels like this is a dream come true. Have faith. Your rainbow will come shining through. So again, that goes back to what I said before. But however frustrating this is, they're planning for sure to have a good future with you because they feel like this dream is going to come true if they have enough faith here. Um, we've got expose one of your existence squares. I'm not in distress. I have a portrayal, I have a portrayal competition today. Okay. All right, crocodile tears. Um, I hope you fracture a limb. <laughs> okay. So basically, this little character is an actor, and his friend or whoever is telling him to break a leg, right? Because that's what you say to actors about to go out on stage when you want to wish them well. They have superstitions, so they say say break they say break a leg instead as a way of saying you know good luck. So um, I feel that somebody could be an actor. Somebody could have acted, you know, like they felt some way that they didn't feel. You might want to look out for this person to make sure they're being authentic. Um, when they come back, for some of you, this person isn't going to be being authentic, especially if they were sneaky and deceptive in the past. It'll be your judgment call as whether to trust, you know, what they're saying to you or how they're coming towards you as being authentic or not. Um, and I feel like you will catch it if that's the case, because I'm taking this literally, like if this person comes at you in a way that you feel is not authentic, you're going to be like, yeah, whatever, buddy, <laughs> uh, kick rocks, right? Don't let the door hit you. So, um, I feel that that's important. And then we've got, um, swap one existence square between any two beings. I did not employ the sustenance separator and now there are consequences. So that's what I said about boundaries. Some sort of boundaries were crossed here. Sometimes in dating, especially in modern dating, it's hard to know what your expectations are. People are afraid of getting played, so they play. Um, yeah, I've seen people do that. So just like, I don't know, the little games that people play when they're dating. But something here about boundaries being crossed and then making a mess. Okay. And then finally, we've got broken bridge, unsuccessful outcome to a problem. So this person feels like whatever kind of... Um, solution that they applied to this connection you know whatever solution there's a potential for it to fail that you know especially the riskier of a risk that they take regarding you in this connection you know the higher the likelihood that it won't work out but we already saw that this person's pretty sure that you know this is going to have a good outcome um so i feel like this is past energy an unsuccessful outcome to a problem so maybe you guys were dating and this person was playing games um because we saw that they feel like they need to become a better person. So um, those games did not result in the results that they had hoped for. Um, regardless of what form those those games may have taken, this person, bottom line, wouldn't say that they feel like they need to become a better person or that you're better than them if they had always behaved on the up and up. So this is what I've got for you, group two. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Um, if you feel like it and you um, were trying to decide between groups one and two, feel free to check out group one. And if you'd like a private reading, my contact information is in the description box down below. Um, I don't know if I said yet, but I'm saying it now. It's $5 for, um, for an email reading, okay? So that information is down below. Okay, I appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you next time.